Today we're doing the build and assembly of the Mario 5. Now I've done a full review on the Mario 5 frame kit, talking about all the specifications and what makes this so special, including how to assemble it. I'll leave that video linked above and below so you can take a look at it. Now onto the parts here, a little bit different than normal. Today we'll be using some parts from our previous build, starting off with the flight controller and ESC stack. Today we're going with the SpeedyB F405 V3. Now currently there's a version four of this stack, but this one here isn't too old, maybe less than a year old, and this should be more than capable. In addition, this one has a 30 by 30 mountain hole, which is the only bolt pattern for this Mario 5. So you can't use a mini stack on this unless you have some kind of adapter. Now moving on to the motor, today we'll be using the Rush FPV Reactor Series. This is a 2207 1860 kV motor, and based upon the kV value, we'll be using a 6S battery for this build. Now as you can see here, I have these motors already attached to the ESC. So there's gonna be very little work today assembling this drone or putting this together. It's still may not work. I might have to do some tweaks a little bit, but it's already sort of so this should really reduce the workload on this build today. Finally, let's talk about the VTX for today's build. Now, this is the most controversial part of my builds only because it's so subjective and you can use whatever you want. But today I'll be using the Walksnail Moonlight Kit. This is the latest offering by Walksnail. This one features a 4K camera and the ability to stabilize the image both in the built-in DVR as well on your computer using the Gyroflow software. I'm kind of excited to see how this one here looks. Now I have some other accessories here like propellers. I'll be using the iFlight Nazgul propellers as well as an Express LS receiver here, which is already soldered and built into my flight controller right here. So that's one last thing I have to do once I install this on the frame. So let's go to the workbench and get all these parts installed in the Mario 5. Okay, so here at the workbench, we have our Mario 5. We also have all our electronics and motors. All right, first thing as usual, I wanna get access to the actual mounting for the actual flight controller. Now, I do have some different circumstances here than a typical build than normal, only because I'm reusing some of, or actually <laughs> almost all, of my gear here from a previous build. It's gonna be a little bit different than usual. Usually I'm mounting the ESC and flight controller and seeing what's the best orientation for this whole setup here. Now this is gonna be very similar. Uh, let's just get this in right now. Typically you would have this facing rearwards. And as usual, we're just gonna see what fits, what doesn't fit. The motors are gonna go back here. As you can see already, the motors for the rear is gonna be a little bit too short since we have a longer legs. This came off an X or a true X drone and the legs on a dead cat is a little bit longer. So we have to adjust these and modify these. As far as the front arms, these should be fine. And here's our flight controller and the arrow is facing forward. And this looks good, everything looks pretty fine here. This is my wire for my GPS if I do elect to do that. The way that this frame here was designed is that we have numerous options for this balance lead or this uh, XT60 cord or cable right here. And you have one in the back right here. That's a really nice choice, but you do have to wire the leads under here. But the good thing about this frame is that it gives you options. Uh, if you look at this right here, you have the option to put an XT60 right here or in the front. And now this is not the way I was gonna do it, but it looks like on further inspection, I could utilize this hole or cutter here for this XT60 and not have to do that much work. Now, if I rotate this whole thing around, not only do I have the power leads, the XT60 in the front, but I also have this capacitor out of the way. So if I make a 180 right here, and there you go. Now there's nothing obstructing the VTX portion of it and then this lead should be able to come out of here. I think that's gonna work out pretty good. Now, this saves me a lot of time and labor. Now, if you wanna make this thing very, very neat, there is a slot on there here between the mid plate and the bottom plate to actually store your capacitor. But in this case, it fits really nice. There's a lot of space between the flight controller and where the camera is gonna be. The capacitor is just gonna sit right there. It's already soldered to the ESC, so there's less soldering and there's no real reconfiguration or orientation with this build here. I still have to extend these motor wires and that's not a problem. I have an extra motor right here, so I'll just desolder one and extend the, the cable with this one. The reason I'm talking about this right now is only because I have to install the VTX first and kind of just lay down the cable or the cord for the VTX. So it's like a, a little sandwich, like a little, you're making a sandwich here and the first layer is gonna be the camera. So we are just gonna 
put that straight through here and run this wire at the bottom before putting the ESC. Now this thing comes with hardware here. Um, I still have to do that first. So let's get this stupid thing off. Okay, so I have my two antennas mounted into my TPU mount. I just made this hole a little bit bigger. It's not the most ideal. As you can see, they're kind of close together. I wish they were at a 45 degree. Now I need to just install or mount these UFL to the VTX. And that requires a small Phillips screwdriver. Let's put that right there. Let's remove this plate. And as I suspected, it's gonna be very hard to press this on here. When I did the review, I did talk about that, but yeah, that's gonna be tough. All right, let's try it. I mean, that's why we're here, right? All right, so that one's in. Whew. All right, we got both in. This thing requires so much concentration. All right, so I'm just gonna take this off. It's already attached to this, but I need to remove this UFL connector and I need to route this through here before I install the VTX. Jeez, all right, I'll have to unsolder this. Ah. All right, I know what to do. Let's fire this up. This whole thing is gonna be hidden under here. That's how they want it, I guess. All right, and this is just gonna pop up through here. Okay, now I can mount my VTX. And let's just get the, I'm gonna use the short screws for now. I think that should be long enough. Let's see if that works. That actually comes through. So let's see if it's gonna take it. It should be easily actually, but all right. So we have one on there. All right. So we got two on there. That's pretty secure, honestly. Sweet, all four captured the actual VTX. I can try to slide this in now. All right. It's in there. Looks pretty good. Now I can just put the ESC back in here, the place that we wanted to put it. And now we have this MIPI cable here. It should be a little bit loose. Perfect. So now once I put this ESC on here, it shouldn't be a problem. There it is. No issues there. So at this point here, I think we are good. I'm just gonna mount my motors to the arms here. The rares are not gonna reach, and then I'll have to desolder this or unsolder it and then remeasure. Uh, this is gonna be more than a mock-up. I'm gonna use these injected molded plastic legs or feet for them while I'm here, because I wanna install them one time. If this was a, a typical test run, I would just, you know, just mock it up. Not bad. All right, so we have one motor on. It looks really good. Wow, you have a lot of protection here for these motors. Let's do the other one. Get this one here. All right. So we're halfway done, right? Maybe. So I have to desolder these three and these three. And then remeasure them. All right. So this motor here, I might reuse, I don't know. I will desolder this one as well. Three. All right. Perfect. I have a new one here. I tried to get two new ones. I couldn't get two. Pretty cool. Now I need to measure, cut. All right. I'll just tin these quickly. Let's do it. Time to solder these things on here. Perfect, I think. This one is gonna be a pain in the ass. I don't know how I'm gonna make it fit, but that's gonna go like that. I'll have to extend it. Okay, so I have my fourth mortar installed on here. I have it extended, it looks pretty cool with some shrink wrap. We're just gonna tidy this up a little bit later with some electrical tape or automotive tape on here, so it should look really nice once we're done. But right now it looks really good. Next thing of order is the VTX. So we have the VTX already installed in here. And the way this is gonna connect to the flight controller is with its provided harness. Now this is pretty nice on here. It's a plug affair, it just plugs into the VTX and it wires up to the actual flight controller. But 
Unfortunately, Cadex did not include, or Walksnow didn't include, a harness that goes into modern flight controllers. We'll have to do it the old fashioned way. As you can see right here, one end plugs into the VTX and the other end has to be manually soldered to the flight controller. And I wish that they did provide, or just give us the option to plug it straight into the flight controller. And if we don't need it, then we can just snip it and do it the old fashioned way. But to have it this way, I think is not the best way and gives us more work. All right, that seems straightforward. Let's just do it. All right, that looks good. And the last thing I wanna do is wire up my receiver. Okay, so we have our receiver connected to the flight controller. I think we're finished with this holder right here. All I wanna do here is just plug this harness from the ESC to the flight controller. Perfect. There you go. That looks pretty good actually. We have our harness here for our VTX. I'm gonna run it right over here, like on top. And I think we're just gonna plug it in right now, honestly. No, it makes no sense, hold off on that. Yep, and now it's pretty easy. Let's see, that fits in pretty nice. Yep. All right, not too bad. A little bit of poking out there, but not bad at all. Look at this, this thing is pretty much done. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's put the screws for the actual flight controller on here or the nuts that they say. Nice. And then the last one. All right, definitely not gonna over tighten these, but we want it secure. I think we're done with the internal part of this drone here. I think we can put the cover on here. We're just gonna put the wires through here and uh, Initially, I was worried, up, worried about this here affecting the flight controller, but we'll see. I don't think it's gonna affect it. As long as it's not touching the flight controller, I'm happy. And that holds this in place. Let's do the other side. All right, that one's going through as well, which is nice. Um, I could put the top plate on. I might just put the top plate only because there's nothing else stopping this. This looks really nice. Slip this right through there. Was good. We're just gonna put like two. We're not gonna put all, just in case I have to open this again. There's a high chance I'll have to open this for some crazy reason. All right. Now the camera, as you can see, the camera has adequate space to reach the front. So this just goes right in here and we can mount it through this little window. Now this is like a 19.6 millimeter. So it's not exactly 19 millimeters, nor is it exactly 20 millimeters. So we have two little camera mounts on here. All right, let's see if this works. <sighs> it looks too short already. I can, it did catch. All right, is it stiff enough? Yeah, it's stiff enough, it can adjust, it looks. Pretty good. Take a look at that. Here's my automotive tip. I love using this thing. We're gonna use this chair, it's so squeaky. All right, let's attack. Let's attack the simple ones. <laughs> All right, that one looks really nice. Sweet, here's the drone here. Mario 5 looks good. This thing is 90% done. All I have to do now is put the props on here. The props are coming in hot. All right, we're gonna do a props out. Let's do a props out. So we can always arrange this in beta flight, but yeah, we're gonna go with the props out for now. And that is amazing. Let's torque this down. Perfect. So we have all the motors on here. All the props are on here. All right, so this is a five inch drone. Obviously we could run an action camera on here. This is a 4K camera. So this is gonna be the equivalent to like an O3 air unit. So I don't think I'm gonna put an action camera in here for now, but it should be able to carry that with these big propellers. And that's it. Last thing we have is just the SpeedyB strap. Boom. Nice. 
there's your Mario 5. This thing here is complete. It looks really, really nice. This thing is bright too, so if this thing crashes, it'll be easy to find. Well, hopefully. Hopefully I don't crash it. Good lord, this looks good. This is cool. We just have to configure this and take it for a flight, guys. So, if you want to see that flight video, hit that subscribe button there for you to be notified whenever I do drop that video. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you in that video. Peace.